Today is called Good Shepherd Sunday. You might guess that from the Gospel reading. Our Lord is the Good Shepherd, and we often find these images of our Lord as the Good Shepherd in our church windows, in paintings and holy cards. This image goes all the way back to the first catacombs where we find images of the Good Shepherd, references to Christ. And Jesus tells us in the Gospel today from St. John that he is the Good Shepherd. But what does this mean, that he is the Good Shepherd? Some might not know what to make of this image if they've never lived in a rural area perhaps like all those New Yorkers who are probably not watching us today. So it may be difficult for people who live in the city to grasp what Jesus is telling us. Some people would think that it means, therefore, that he's a nice guy. I tell my students at the university that Jesus is not a nice guy. He throws people out of the temple. He overturns the tables of the money changers. He gets angry with the Pharisees and calls them whitewashed sepulchers. Nice guys don't do that. Some would think that Jesus has no requirements. He makes no demands. That we just kind of ramble through life like little sheep and Jesus follows us around to protect us from all the bad guys. Now, that's a very poor image of our Lord. Jesus is telling us in this image something very different. As a shepherd, he has to fight for us. As a shepherd, he is constantly vigilant. As a shepherd, he is fearless and courageous. As a shepherd, he has patient love for us. And as a shepherd, he lays down his life for us. One of the sisters from the Nashville Congregation of the Dominican Order, this is a little pitch for Dominican sisters, any of the women who have vocations, that leaves out married women, even if you want to leave your husbands. They're looking for young women. <laughs> as well as the congregation that takes care of the cancer, uh, the people who are suffering from cancer, too, the Dominican sisters. Anyways, the sister from Nashville was telling me about her family. She comes from a sheep ranching family in southern Texas. Her father has a very large farm with thousands of heads of sheep. She was explaining how her father and brothers, for the most part, care for, herded, and sheared the sheep and so forth. There's a great amount of work that goes into caring for sheep, most especially, she said, because they're not very bright. And she told about the coyotes. Coyotes love lamb almost as much as you and I do. And sisters, brothers, and father have to exercise a great vigilance to protect the sheep. This is the kind of love and protection that God has for us. Christ speaks to us about the wolf in the gospel. We can think of wolves or coyotes. Either way, there's a great deal of danger. Someone is lurking to get you. And this is not just a big conspiracy theory, because that someone is the devil. He hates humanity. He hates humankind. He hates the mere thought of us. It was envy that drove him to his sin, and it is envy that drove him to tempt Adam and Eve, and it is his hatred of you and me in a spiritual warfare that pits us very often against him in ways that we often do not imagine. And there are many hired hands who do not care for us. So we have to know the Lord's voice. We have to know the Good Shepherd's voice. 
Well, if the coyote or the wolf is the devil, who are the hired hands? I dare say television, even though we're being broadcast on television. And I don't mean Catholic television, of course. I mean the newscasters and so many of the national networks. I mean some of those inane shows that are meant to sap us of our strength and teach us very bad morals. I mean those crazy commercials that are shown even on national primetime television during sports games, prime time that young boys are watching, teaching them to devalue women. I'm talking about all of the kind of very bad energy in our music and our entertainment that leads us to think we are fulfilled in these things. But it is emptiness. In the end, we are no happier. In the end, we look for more, for something different, for a bigger high, something else to fulfill us. Or there's Madison Avenue, even if you can't afford Madison Avenue, now they're telling us, go to the dollar store. But it's always one thing or another, isn't it? Spend your money. This will make you happy if you buy this. Well, isn't that what got us into the financial trouble in the first place? Buying something that doesn't fulfill empty debt? How stupid can we get? <laughs> Talk about dumb sheep. Or there are, and God forgive me, well, God will forgive me, but you can forgive me if there are any politicians here, but the politicians, especially the Catholic ones, who do not stand up for what it means to be Catholic when it comes to making laws that protect all of us, the unborn, the aged, the sick, all of us from conception to the grave. The hired hand doesn't care about us. Christ does. And so, my dear friends, again, we have to know Christ. We have to know his voice. And there is only one way to do that, and that is to go to him in prayer, to hear his voice as we read what he says to us in the sacred scriptures Every day we have to pay attention, just like you would to anyone else you love. He has to be the center of our lives. No one else will save us. Nothing here is lasting, not this chapel, not St. Peter's in Rome. No thing, no one lasts on this earth. Put your money, put your stock into what really lasts, and that is only God, only eternal life. And if you want that eternal life, and you do because you're made for it, it's in your soul, that desire, then go to the one who can give it to you, to him alone. Leave everyone else except your families. Leave everything behind. Focus on Christ. Meet him again in the sacraments. When you receive Holy Communion, close your eyes and speak to the Good Shepherd who lays you tenderly on his shoulder because he wants to take you home with him, your home where you belong, your eternal home. Learn to love him. Learn his voice so that all those other voices become what they really are, howls of the wolves and the coyotes, and run from them. Run into his arms. Stay in his protection always. The Eucharist, the sacrament of penance, which we should all be availing of our, ourselves of regularly. Prayer, the reading of scriptures, and then you will be safe.